Hey beautiful and welcome back to Feminine Financial Freedom where we elevate our lives by working smarter not harder to fund our soft life. Today's video is going to be the first video of a long running series, one of the couple series I have that's going to be on this channel. And this series is all about how to create your passive paycheck. So passive income is something that I am extremely passionate about. It's also something that I have been practicing and doing and building and earning money from for many years now. And I I'm so excited to just give back all the knowledge that I have gained on this topic. So today's video is going to be all about stream number one when creating your passive income paycheck, and that is social media. So social media is going to be the first one that we talk about because your business can really be built around your social media, funneled through your social media, promote it through your social media. Now it's not everything. There are many other ways to make passive income besides social media. However, I definitely wanted to start with this video because it is going to be the foundation for a lot of the girlies out there. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, and let's get right into it. All right, no fluff. The first thing I need y'all to do is pick two social media platforms. Now I know there's a bunch of social media platforms out nowadays, but I need you to really narrow it down to two. This is not going to only help with getting laser focused, but it's going to also help prevent burnout. So choose two social media platforms that you want to focus on and start building your brand around. Now I'm going to go ahead and say, I highly, highly, highly recommend your number one social media platform be YouTube. Okay. So YouTube is tried and true. It's proven to not only be the highest paying social media platform, but the longest lasting, the most engaging. It may not be the easiest to grow on, but there are different things that are going on with the algorithm nowadays that are promoting smaller channels. I know you guys have seen on your feed that there are smaller channels that are getting promoted to you, all because you've liked similar content and YouTube is pushing smaller creators to the forefront. I know I'm seeing it on my feed. And so the time is now to get started with YouTube. And I'm gonna dedicate an entire video to really getting on YouTube and creating your content creator business on YouTube. But for now, I just want you guys to know that the first social media platform platform you choose should be YouTube. A thing that's not talked about a lot when it comes to why you can make so much money on YouTube and through YouTube is because YouTube is by far the most link friendly platform and links is where the money is. Being able to link to your product, link to your business, link to your services, link to your website, being able to easily link out is where you need to focus your energy when it comes to using social media. Get the eyes to link them somewhere else. And YouTube's platform is by far the best and the most link friendly social media platform. Now, the second platform that you choose, totally up to you. Whether you want it to be Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, depending on your business, it's gonna depend on probably which one you choose. Twitter, the girlies are making money on Twitter. So you can definitely choose whichever one you want to be your second one, but I definitely recommend your first one to be YouTube. Focusing on two social media platforms instead of spreading yourself thin across all the social media platforms will make sure that you're emphasizing quality over quantity. Creating quality content and giving value, inspiration, and education to the people is what is going to make people pay attention to you. Gone are the days where you can just look cute. Looking cute is a plus. And I may do a video on pretty privilege too, but looking cute is a plus, but giving knowledge to the girls, giving out valuable content is where it is at. So narrowing down your social media platform focus to just two will make sure that you can allocate more time and resources to creating that valuable content. Audience engagement. So with audience engagement, I personally love YouTube for this. I think that YouTube is the best platform. Some people would argue that it's TikTok. People love TikTok. They say that TikTok is where you can really feel like you know somebody virtually. And so people find that it's really nice and easy to engage with your audience on TikTok. Me personally, I find it very easy to engage with my audience on YouTube. So it's really going to depend on you and your audience where you get the most engagement at. There's some people that I'll talk to that on Instagram, that's where their engagement is. And so give to what's giving back to you. If you're trying to decide which one should you choose as your secondary platform after choosing YouTube as your main, then think about which platform is giving you the most engagement. Is your Twitter page popping? 
Choose that as your secondary platform. Engagement is not just about numbers. Engagement is really about building a community of people that trust what you are saying. And having trust and building community, the sales come effortlessly, effortlessly. That needs to be the foundation of building your brand. Let's touch on consistent branding. So being not only aesthetically pleasing, but having a consistent brand across your two platforms is gonna be super important. So I have just rebranded my YouTube channel, right? And so I am focusing on creating a new brand and making sure that all my content going forward fits into my new brand. Having consistent branding is not only gonna help with being recognizable, but it's gonna also help foster that trust and community where people can trust you to come to you to find out about certain things. And yes, a lot of times this does involve niching down. Niching down is something that I did not want to do. I rebelled against niching down. I'm like, no, you can't put me in the box. No, 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 no. And honestly, you don't have to be in a box. You just need to make sure that you choose your boxes. It could be four boxes, okay? Choose your boxes and just stick with them. Stick with those boxes, all right? Taking people on a roller coaster with your brand consistency annoys people. It annoys people. You're gonna lose followers. You're gonna lose support. You're gonna lose trust. So pick your boxes and stick with them. I'm calling them boxes, but let's start calling it content pillars. It could be two. It could be three, it could be four, it could be five. Decide what you are passionate about, what you know a lot about, and choose those as your content pillars. So let's say that you have three topics in mind. Let's say you're really passionate about hair, makeup, and e-commerce. Boom, those are your three content pillars. That means that when you start brainstorming for content that you're gonna put on your social media platforms, each content idea should be able to fit in one of those three content pillars. This is gonna keep you organized and make sure that you are staying on track with consistent branding. I am a multi-passionate person, so I have seven content pillars. I got seven content pillars, but that might seem like it's overwhelming. For me, it's not. I have been able to allocate all of my content into one of those content pillars, scheduled it out over the months, over the week. It helps me be extremely organized. And even though it is seven content pillars, they are still kind of related and it's not too all over the place. So once you have your content pillars, you can take it a step further when you're on YouTube and you can build a YouTube playlist with the titles being your content pillars. So these are my seven content pillars organized into YouTube playlist titles. So when people go to my YouTube page, they will be able to see that every single one of my videos going forward will be able to fit in a playlist. And also they'll be able to know what they can find on my channel if they decide to subscribe to me. So letting people know up front what they can expect from you is going to help people make the decision to want to keep up with you. Now let's backtrack a little bit when it comes to your two social media platforms. So the main one being YouTube, right? That's where you're going to put your long form content. You're going to put your educational, valuable content on there. The goal is to give value to people and be able to link people to your products and services off of the app, which YouTube makes it very easy for creators to do. You also get paid through Google AdSense. You can get paid through channel memberships, super chats if you do live videos. People can even leave you tips in the comment section of videos that you've already posted when people feel like, wow, I just got a lot of valuable content for free. I wanna tip this person $5, $10, $20. I see those tips underneath other creators and I've also gotten a few tips myself and it's like, wow. And then of course, you can also get paid through brand deals and sponsorships. So you can definitely charge the highest amount of money for your YouTube sponsorships than you can on any other platform because it's long form and it's evergreen. So unlike other platforms like TikTok and Instagram, which are timeline focused, when you post something short, it's, people forget about it with, by the end of the day. YouTube isn't like that. YouTube will promote and push out a video that's a year old. And brands know this and value this. So when you are a YouTube creator, you can charge more for your brand deals. And then as far as your secondary platform, your secondary platform should consist of either repurposed content from your main platform or behind the scenes slash a different side of you than your main platform. So I actually went back and forth on this decision for my personal brand a lot. I'm like, should I do repurpose content? Like, you know, basically turning my long form content into shorter reels and just post that on my Instagram? Or how should I do this? I have actually decided to just showcase a different side of me on Instagram. 
I didn't want the same content that you could find on my YouTube channel to be found on my Instagram. So my Instagram, it's all new content. It's not repurposed content at all. It's new reels. It's behind the scenes stuff. It's a different side of me. It's more personal. It's more fun. Um, I do like lip syncing stuff over there. It's kind of like comedic stuff. I wouldn't say I'm like the most brand friendly over there. You can decide which way works best for your brand. But for my brand, the whole point of my brand is to help women make money. That is my number one focus, is to help women make money. And so I decided that I wanna use my secondary platform, which is Instagram right now, I wanna use that to showcase people what it looks like when you are a financially free woman. So by being myself on that platform, that does relate to my brand in a roundabout way, if that makes sense. So you have to decide which way is gonna work best for your brand. I've definitely seen people go the straightforward uh, repurpose content route and that works for them. I've also seen people go just straight up behind the scenes. And then I've also seen the duality route, which is like seeing a totally different side of the creator. But either way it goes, your secondary platform is there to attract a new audience because some people are platform specific. There are a lot of people on Instagram that have no idea that I even have a YouTube channel and vice versa. But your secondary platform needs to focus on engaging with the community, broadening and expanding your audience, and getting people intrigued to either come to your long-form content or go to your products and services. Now the biggest tip that I have when it comes to creating content and making sure that you don't get overwhelmed with just how much content that you have to produce nowadays is to film everything. Capture everything. Take little video snippets, take photos of everything. Be that girl, be that girl that if you're just sitting at the coffee shop, get a little snippet, get a little snippet of your computer and the coffee in the background and, and the atmosphere in the coffee shop. Get that little snippet. You can use that for a reel in the future you, or you can use it as B-roll on your YouTube channel. You don't know when you can use it, but having little video snippets and taking little video snippets of everything you do and worrying about the editing and what you're gonna do with it later is going to not only save you time, but it's gonna save you a lot of headache when it comes to creating content. Because yes, we can batch film all we want, we can, but just having a surplus of essentially stock footage that you have taken yourself, that you can use for your brand later, is going to really take a lot of pressure off of you. And the ideas of what to do with all this content will come later. That's what happened to me. So living in Hawaii for a year, I have been taking photos and videos of so many things in my phone, on my GoPro, on my regular camera. I have accumulated so much footage, I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. I thought I was gonna do like an end of the year vlog or something like that, but I decided not to do that. I decided to break up all of my content that I have and turn it into short form content and use some of it as B-roll for my future videos. And I have been able to create over 50, over 50 short form videos based off of footage that I already had. And so now I'm 50 pieces of content ahead. So it just gets me not only motivated to continue to do that, but it takes a lot of pressure off of me knowing that I have so much stock footage. I don't have to run around like a chicken with my head cut off and make sure that every batch film day goes perfectly and everything goes right when I have so much on reserve. Now, the next biggest tip is to get organized. Now I need you guys to really get organized before you really put your foot out there, get organized, get organized. So there's actually some people that'll be like, oh, just start, you don't have to have a plan, just start. I couldn't disagree more. I think that you need to have a clear laid out plan of action, have video titles, have scripts in those videos. When you're talking about short form, have captions written, footage filmed, have predetermined dates of posting. You guys, I have a year's worth of YouTube videos already planned out. That makes me so happy. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Now it took me a long time, it took me two whole months of working consistently, but it's worth it. It's totally worth it because now for the rest of the year, all I have to do is execute. The brainstorming's done, the planning's done, the scripting's done. A lot of the brain work is done. Now it's just time to get to work. I just have to film and edit. 
which is a lot of work, but a whole lot of work has already been done. So just imagine if I had to do every single step of work for every single video going forward, that's where burnout comes in. That's where getting discouraged comes in. That's when quitting before it's your time comes in. So to avoid all of that, having, now a year is a lot, that's a lot, but having at least, at least 90 days of content already prepped, planned, scripted, and some of it even filmed before you even get started with your making money from social media journey is going to be imperative, imperative in your growth, in your success, in your longevity. I am so fueled and amped up about my journey this time around because of that. Like I, I'm so organized now. I, I know exactly what I need to do and I know exactly what I'm going to do. And next, this kind of goes into the planning process of your content, but make sure that you're not posting anything until you know if you can monetize it or not. For example, if you're filming a get ready with me on your TikTok, do not post that video until you already have the links to your products, AKA your outfit. If it was a makeup thing, then your makeup products, shoot, even the hair you're wearing, make sure you have those links, those affiliate links already ready. And when you post, you can post it, linking and tagging the products and anything that can be shown in the video, make sure that you are linking that with affiliate links. When you are treating social media like a business, you have to think backwards, okay? You have to think about how you're gonna make money from it first before you even film it. And you'll know, okay, actually, I have these jeans I was gonna wear in this Get Ready With Me, but I don't have a link for these jeans because I got these jeans from Marshalls. And as far as I know, you can't link to Marshalls. Um, Marshalls doesn't have an affiliate program. I do have a pair of extremely similar jeans that can be found on Target. And Target does have an affiliate program. So I can actually link these jeans instead. So it'll literally change the outfit that you're wearing because you can make money off of those jeans instead of the ones you were gonna wear. So literally you have to reframe your mind into being money focused. Hello, this is not for fun anymore. You have to think about how you're gonna monetize your content first before you even film anything so that you know exactly why you're filming and what to film. If you're selling a service or a digital product or you want people to book with you or basically anything that has to do with linking out, make sure you have a call to action at the bottom of your captions, at the end of your videos, at the end of your carousel post. Make sure you have a call to action. You got to tell people where to go. You got to tell people what to do. Okay, you gotta tell people what you offer. For me, I didn't wanna bombard people with my services and my e-courses and all the things that I have going on. Like, oh, it's so salesy, it's so salesy. How else are you gonna get sales? If people don't know that you're selling something, how are they gonna buy from you? So there is a fine line between bombarding and being cringy and just selling, 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 selling. You can do it in a way that seems organic and is on brand for you and doesn't overwhelm people and make people want to unsubscribe or unfollow you. You can definitely do it in a tasteful way, but you got to do it. You, you got to sell. You got to let people know what you're selling and why they should buy from you. Now, before I close out this video, I just want to touch on imposter syndrome real quick. All right. Imposter syndrome is very common. It's very normal. You are not weird for feeling this way. But I want you to flip that energy that you're putting towards imposter syndrome to fake it till you make it. Yes, ma'am. Fake it till you make it. Thank me later. Fake it till you make it. Even if you're not that girl right now, you better act like it. Nobody should know you're not that girl. No one wants to buy from you if you're not that girl. So act like that girl to be that girl. You got to. You got to start somewhere. So before you know it, you're going to be that girl. So just get out your head. Fake it till you make it. What's that audio? That, um, who's going to know? How are they going to know? No one's going to know. Confidence is your best asset in the beginning. Confidence in time. <laughs> 
having the time to dedicate to your business is the number one asset. But, but a very close second is confidence in what you're doing and what you're selling. If you're not confident in you, if you're not sure in you, how can anybody else be? So yeah, I hope that gets you started on creating your passive paycheck with social media. Again, this is going to be a long running series on my channel. So there's more in-depth videos to come on this topic and more. So if that interests you, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video.